Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and supportive of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to CBC Gym and Sastel Curling Stadium's live coverage from the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. We're right into the action here in this semifinal. My name is Sean Joyce. My broadcast partner for this afternoon's matchup will be Mark No. Yeah, thanks for having me. Right into it here. The Beth Peterson team out of Winnipeg's being skipped this week by Robin Silvernagel, facing off against Savannah Terenzoni. Terenzoni. By virtue of her B event qualification versus Peterson coming through the C, she has last rock here in the first end of play. Silvernagel with the red stones. About to throw the first of the second stones here. So this is Catherine Dirksen, the second for this Peterson rink. Melissa Gordon is the lead. Jenna Loader throwing the third stones, and this week it has been Robin Silvernagel. Skipping the team. Looking at least for now to take the play away from that Tiranzoni corner guard. And Silvana looking for the, uh, the freeze here. Yeah, a little, a bit, little bit offensive in the first. Carol Howard, the second. The lead Briar Herleman. Silvana Tiranzoni skips the team but throws third stones, and Alina Petz is the fourth stone thrower for this Swiss team. She had signaled like they were going to play the freeze. I think she was just playing the quiet hit all the way in and wanted to stay right there. Yeah. Which makes sense, you know, first end, just kind of getting warmed up and uh, we'll exchange hits and uh, strong chance of seeing a blank here. Another hit made, and she stays right there as well. Important to hold the shooter on these shots for both teams, really. Uh, yes, Robin Silvernagel did play away from the guard initially, but you roll out late enough in the end, she'll come around and try to get her force that way. Of course, on the other side, if the Peterson team ever rolls one out, Silvana Tiranzoni will go around that corner guard and see if she can't score an easy deuce here to open things up. Looking for the nose hit again. And the sweepers don't seem to be too interested in it. Having to go a little bit to, to get it to curl here, but does move it a little bit closer to the center line. So we're inching closer to that corner. Still behind the T line, though. I think uh, you'll find Tiran's only try to stay in the open here. If she rolls behind the guard, there you go. Yeah. If she rolls behind the guard, she'd be behind the T line, and you'd see Robin Silvernagel play a freeze to it. T 
Tern's only content to blank this first end all day, but uh, if you give her a chance for a deuce, she'll take it. She's not going to force anything. Not going to get a roll across the face. The question now is, can she even hold the shooter? Hits that fairly thin. Rolls well past the guard out into the open on the other side. You... Briar Hurleman bent over and take the, the roll on that. They didn't want to stay in behind the guard that deep because, as we said, Robin Silvernagel would have called for the freeze. I'm going to curl this one here a little bit. And we'll get there. Does this spin out? Looks like it does stay on, though. Hangs on in the 12 foot, and that's important if she rolls out. Savannah Terranzoni would have gone around that corner guard, and we said that's that uh, risk-free opportunity for a deuce. As it is, not wanting to get forced, she'd like to keep the blank alive. She'll hit this stone, try to stay right there. Nice quiet weight on the hit, comes down, hits just a little past the nose, even rolls a little just farther to the outside. Stick there, yeah, so we'll see. Getting very close to the edge here, gonna have to make an effort to make sure this one stays in the rings, as you said. Cause, it doesn't uh, make it tricky, doesn't it? It's it's one of those shots that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a chance that neither team has played this wide all week. So you're guessing a little bit on the ace. Robin Silvernagel with her first stone here this opening end. And they're on the brush on this they're one early. Hard. Doesn't have much room to roll to the outside. She hits it right on the nose, stays there. Pets, the fourth stone thrower for this tier and zone foursome out of Switzerland. <clears throat> She'll look to hit and stay right there again. And then we may see Robin Silvernagel with her last one try to get the roll over behind the uh, corner guard, even if she's deep, just to get the force. This one looks like it's got a little bit more line, but. A little bit of late sweep to to carve it towards it. Will it stick around? Does stay in the back and perhaps a piece behind cover. Will make it a little bit trickier for Robin Silvernagel to try to stay behind cover. She'd like to... Uh, She'd love to hit and roll in behind, but she's got to negotiate the guard. Yeah, you could almost... <sighs> yeah, I guess no reason just to try to draw or freeze to it, because there's so much separation you can get to it, so if you don't dead freeze it, you're, you're giving up a pretty easy two there. Have to make sure they're by the guard. Then you might see them try to carve it over, get a little bit of a roll in behind.
tried. They maybe got about an inch of roll, but still uh, probably half available from the hacks. Yeah, I think the uh, they were expecting it to finish just a hair more than it did. I was expecting it to, to finish. So Alina Pets with her final stone here in the first end of play will have the opportunity to go for the blank. Brush on early. Plenty of room by the guard there. And this should be Finishing up nicely. Me. Makes the hit, rolls the shooter out of play. We've got a blank. In the first end, no score between Tiranzoni and Peterson. Tiranzoni with last rock in the second. We're for agriculture. For growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. We've just got our shipment of logos here in for our next event, which is gonna be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the Center Ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And, like I said before, very easy to put in. Second end already underway. The first stone was brought into the house. Came to rest back. Now, turns only, I believe, called for the corner guard here, but this is going to slide into the rings as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Both teams. Uh, significantly heavy on their first rocks, so. Robin Silvernagel talked about uh, perhaps throwing the center guard, but they're going to hit, and, and they want to roll away. You stay right there, it starts to form a bit of a pocket, and you might see Kieran's only play a freeze in there. It could be very difficult to remove. Does get the roll as you mentioned. Double is really flat, but even if you just roll over towards that stone, they'll be happy with that right now. Briar Hurleman in the lead for this Swiss foursome. Big weight on the hit, trying for the flat roll. She'll get across the center line, but not all the way over to that second stone. Now Robin Silvernagel looking to hit roll to the open side. Split the house and uh, see if you can hold it long enough to get the force here, perhaps, in the second end. on the sweep on this one right away this is crossing that center line they were hoping to roll broom side they're gonna have to go just to keep from rolling into their own stone and it does make contact on their own stone it moves it from the rings it does stay in play but well back out on the wings just the one stone in the rings right now no guards in front 
Has there been a discussion here? Are they thinking about throwing a corner guard guarding this uh, stone in the back of the eight foot? They're definitely talking about something. The question is, do you throw the corner guard or were they just discussing turn? And I think they've opted for the corner guard. It is the second end, the even end. You do see a lot of teams a little bit more willing to be aggressive with last rock in the even ends. Sean, do you like them going the corner on the other side, or could you make a case to throw the corner here and then use that, you know, stone in the back of the house as, as backing for to, to really lock one on? You could make a case for that, but I think by by covering that, you kind of take yourself out of play for the blank. So you play the corner to the open side. You still have the option to freeze to that one if you'd like. And I think part of the part of the reason they thought about throwing that corner guard is. The question that's coming up here, what does Robin Silvernagel do now? Yeah. If you ignore that corner guard, you know that Tiranzoni is going to try to use it. If you straight peel it, she can blank the end whenever she likes, or to start to play for the blank whenever she likes. So I think the call here is to hit and roll back towards the center line, try to have a center guard out of this. actually going to roll past the center. They do cover their own stone at the back of the 8-foot. But this gives uh, Tiranzoni that opportunity you were talking about. She can come around a corner guard to the stone at the back. It's a fairly risk-free opportunity here to try to get something going because she's always going to have that outturn draw to the button with the last one. Rushers were on this one early and looking for curl as well. So it's never the this good combination gonna... when you need it to skate and curl. Yeah, and this is going to end up as a center guard pretty much. Yeah, you could afford to be heavy on that shot and come down to that backing as I mentioned earlier, but... Now, uh, we'll see uh, Robin just go ahead and curl around this uh, new center guard. Well, it certainly opens up an opportunity the other way and starts to uh, close off that button area, too. I was just saying that uh, it was risk-free because you were always going to have a pass to the button, and that's not necessarily the case now. This one appears to be coming in just nicely. It's about a quarter in behind cover. Does Tiranzoni have to run in their own yellow now at this point? Well, there's, there's two cases to be made for that. You can make a play directly on the stone that was just delivered, maybe make the double, but you'd leave the come around again. So if you can make the run back, you could actually get rid of that stone and uh, maybe get that guard off the center. Yeah. All at the same time. Yeah. And I suppose if you hit this just a little bit on the high side, you get a chance to uh, to roll behind that corner, right? But I mean, that's that's. We'll, we'll see kind of what kind of uh, weight Sylvan is throwing here. Sweeper's on this hard for line. It's going to make contact with the top one. Just a little on the high sides, enough to stuff it back on the red. The ray stone does stay fully out in the open. I believe it is shot rock, though. Jenna Loader, third for this Peterson foursome with her final stone of this second end looking for the hit. 
Not sure if she can get under cover here or not. Asking to curl it now. Boy, has to be careful. If she's too far on the outside, she could jam it onto her own at the back. And she does just that. Oof. Leaves the Yellowstone shot rock. It is behind the T-line. Terenzoni could just choose to make a play on second shot. The problem is you'd leave the in off or the freeze. So she's going to try to come around that guard, get something in front of the T line. And uh, in so doing, cut off the path to freeze to that back one, too. Now, what kind of depth are we looking for on this shot here? Or did he. Uh, it needs to be at least second here, yeah? And are we trying to, to go to top four or. I, I would think she probably wants to just bite top four. If you get full four foot, Robin Silverenagle might be able to follow it down, freeze to it, and cut out the rock at the back. It's a tough spot, though. You're, you're drawing around a guard that's very tight to the house and trying to bury it, so hard to put it too high in the rings and still be buried. Sweeper switching here to try to get a little bit of finish here. And switching back to the straight side now. Yeah, they were switching, but they were always going with two sweepers, so they knew they had to go for weight. And another draw that they come up really a little bit light. It does uh, make the rings, but third shot for now. It does kind of take away the path to that back stone. Robin looking at playing out of the intern side. Tough to get shot rock with the intern. think looking at the tap now as well yeah i mean I, I, that's a, that's what i was kind of thinking right the tap is relatively risk-free right i mean yeah, it's, it, it's still a difficult shot it, any yeah. kind of a tap when you're adding an element of uh another stone that you've got to line up so the yeah. line's got to be perfect but a good look at it from the hacks to get to the forefoot you really have to to where it would have to be to be shot, you really have to curl hard after you get by that guard. Yeah, I think they are lining up this uh, this tap here. Yeah, it just it's hard to over curl it. You, you know, can get just draw. You can get I more mean, forefoot with the tap. Yeah, but it it does uh, it does make the line a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Got to hit it close to the nose, just a hair high. Looks like that's the one they've opted for. Yeah. And if the last rock by Team Tiranzoni was just a, sh a hair deeper, this this shot's not there. Big shot for Robin Silvernagel here early in this game. Turns only sitting shot and third right now, and second shot's exposed, so you need to get something in here with this one. The low yep call means they're pretty close here. Uh, I think it's going to overcurl just a little bit at the end. Yeah. Still might have enough forefoot, I think. I think it's... I think she's got shot rock out of it. I think it is there, yeah. I was worried they uh, let it over curl there, but just enough. Looking at the draw, looking at, uh, I think uh, it's Tiran's only looking at playing kind of on the corner of the, uh, what is now the third shot rock, knowing that they can come off of that with the last one. Lena Pets wondering if she can see enough of the high of the stone, the 12 foot, to slash it onto Shot Rock. I, I think that's risky. I don't know if she can see enough of it. If you come over the top of that red, 
you'll push it onto your own stone at the back. Uh, looks like they are going to play this, though, with that kind of ice. That's what they're looking at now with that kind of ice. I don't think they're playing it with... with weight. So they might be able to keep the shooter. Yeah, I'm just kind of kind of cornered to that red on the other side as well. You might get a couple of a couple of options here that will work for her for her last one. Needs to hit as much of this rock as she can see. Starting to curl now. Does have to get by the tight guard. Oh. And they lost it. It's just going to rub and go through the port. Rocks in the rings and out the back. Does mean that shot will be available for her last one. Robin Silverangle has to make a decision here. Do you just guard that? Do you come around? You have to be careful not to leave a triple. Yeah. I was just going to say that, yeah. I think the early thoughts were if you go in just center line or just on the left-hand side of the center line from the overhead, top eight, do you leave a triple there? Across the house double on the reds might be available at least for two she only has to move the second rock a couple of inches to get two so if you think that's there you probably have to bring this one into the ring somewhere Really curling hard now. They do have to get a by that stone at the top of the 12 foot. And they're going to rub as well. Now it might have taken away the raise on the yellow by pushing it underneath. I don't yeah, think she left the triple, but is the cross house double available? It's risky now. If you ever play it, and there you see the indication from Sylvana, if you're ever thin on the first one and come along and clip your own out of the back, yeah. it's a steal yeah. of two. It's one thing to play it if you're only looking at a steal of one. I think they're going to take a run at it. I think so too, yeah. Playing the out turn here? Playing the Get out turn, kind of sharp big roll. weight. Get the nice flat roll if you can. May not be able to get the second stone all the way out, but only needs to move it three or four inches to get her deuce. Alina Pets with her final stone here in the second end. Big weight looking to jump across off this stone. She's going to be a little oh, thin on the first man. one. Catches her own, spins up. And it's going to be a steal of one point for the Peterson team. Fortunate, perhaps, for Alina Pets, it didn't turn into a deuce. So Peterson takes a one nothing lead into the third. We've just got our shipment of logos here in for our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And, like I said before, very easy to put in. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. 
We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Third end underway. Peterson team calling for the first stone into the rings. That's it. You see at the top of the eight foot now. Briar Hurlum being asked to throw the corner guard. Karen's only team certainly not playing badly, but uh, they did no. have a couple of chances to set up the deuce last in and, and came up short on a couple of draws, which is perhaps uncharacteristic for this team. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely uh, definitely a bit of a surprise. Um, but, you know, I think uh, Team Peterson also had a chance to come around those kind of centers and left, left theirs just a, just a hair short themselves. So maybe just a spot that's kind of fooling both teams here, but... Uh, we'll see see what kind of adjustments they make here. One difference you see in the playoffs in the preliminary round, the teams have their practice session before the game and then the button for last rock. And so a lot of that practice session is geared towards figuring out that draw weight to the middle. Here in the playoffs, last rock is determined by the higher seating. So they may have thrown some different shots in practice and uh, maybe don't have their draw weight down quite as well as they're used to yeah yeah definitely a possibility it was a uh, interesting end to see how that shaped out you know with with both rocks going into the ring initially and then you know you you would have thought the blank would have just been on but rocks in play and we'll see how this end shapes up with rocks uh actually with, with some guards in place so we'll see how everything shakes out from here Karen's only on that last attempt. They were not looking for the double. They wanted to stay in front of the red stone. Uh, sweepers are backing off this. I think they think it's over curling here. We do not have uh, mics directly on the players, but there are mics out on the ice surface. And now that we're down to two games, it sounds like we can hear a little bit more. You could hear Robin Silvernagel saying that one was over curling just a little bit. Well, it does cover that yellow rock here, but I think Silvano is looking initially at maybe playing just kind of a tick on the top yellow and or maybe go ahead and making a play at this red rock yeah i think what she was thinking is play the quiet hit at the red one and if you tick the yellow that's great the problem is it's it's a very tight port to make with quiet weight it does kind of look like that's what they've settled on though that's a lot of ice to throw a full hit at yeah elena going hard at the sweep here Backing off just a little bit now, switching over to the curl side. Has to get by the corner guard. And then they rub the one in the top of the 12 foot. <clears throat> it does push the red out into the open and the shooter stays in the rings. It's not a bad result. No, oh, yeah. They uh, maybe caught a break touching both there and uh, keeping both the shooter and the target rock in the rings and then pushing that one out in the open. Probably couldn't ask for a much better result here, so. It's tough when you're trying to uh, directional sweep a rock through a port like that. As soon as it was by the corner guard, they really needed to stop sweeping from that side, but not a lot of time there to make that call. Yeah. I 
So we're just hitting the open one here? Yes. Looking for the roll towards the guards. He's actually going to roll right into the pork yeah. again. Really, I don't think it mattered where that one rolled. So Vanatieran's only was going to make the play on this stone, try to roll behind the two guards on the center line. Robin knew that, but you've got to work with what you've got. She certainly has cut down the rings by rolling back there. This one's moving quite a bit here at the end. We'll get there. We'll just roll too far. Nope. He only rolls about half under cover, but uh, that's a nice half to have under cover. If uh, Robin was to make a play on it, you run the risk of jamming onto the redstone at the back. So she's going to look for the run back. Red guard onto the yellow stone in the 12 foot. And you maybe could double the two yellows if you hit it just right. Jenna Loader, the third. Sweepers away from this one here. Maybe just catching it then. Oh, Nothing out of the now. brushers. This one's still backing away from that line. Ends up with just the straight peel. Darren's only now looking at hitting that second shot stone at the back of the eight foot. Roll towards the corner. Not really critical to bury this. It's just they want to keep everything out of the line where it would give uh, Robin Silvernagle too many choices for doubles. got the straight back nose hit for a double no matter what you do here but if you leave a third stone back there it's one of those ones where if you just miss the one double you probably get the other one yeah No problems here with the, the corner guard, now just a matter of getting in line for the roll that they want. Well, they're going to end up with a nose hit. Same shot, really, here for Jenna Loader. Looking for the nose hit on the yellow. Come back and clip the uh, shot stone out of the corner of the forefoot. Yep, sweeper's off this one as well. Now yeah. having to try to carve it in. Looks like she might have been a little in-out on the release again. Not able to catch the stone at the back either, so Tiranzoni continues to sit two. Chance to use the corner guard. There is a double there, but uh, for Silvernagel, if she makes the double, she has to roll to the open side. Now we... Turns only the chance to get two still. If you ever rolled out playing for that double, the chance for three is still yeah. there. Both brushers were on this for the first half. Now they've backed away a little bit. Yeah. Just got room by the guard. Got plenty of room here. Are you okay, are you okay if you take, had to take this deep? Well, it doesn't look like they're going to have to make that decision. No, yeah. <laughs> Robin Silvernagle does have a decision to make, though. You play the double, and you're pretty much conceding an opportunity for two. You play the hit and roll in, you're running the risk of three. 
but that's your probably your only shot to get a force. It looks like that's what they've opted for, playing the hit on the uh, what is shot rock, trying to roll towards the corner guards. If she rolls to where she's buried, I'm not sure she can get shot rock, but she can be second. Pretty close. Makes the hit does roll across. She's kept shot rock. Probably about half exposed. Should be enough to get to it and keep the shooter. Do we think, yeah? Hold on to the shooter somewhere in the back to sit three. Uh, Robin Silvernagel may have to try to play the hit and roll on the back one yeah. behind cover just to save this end. Rushers indicating this is light. They've got one brush down right away. Oh, are they giving up on this? Plan B already. They're on their out. own, hoping to get the guard. does end up sticking around here, but end up covering more of the uh, Red Rock there. Probably a little less weight than what they had in mind. Certainly they wanted quiet, but that was only about backline weight. Robin Silvernagel not out of trouble yet. There's three yellows in the rings. If you're going to come in for second shot, you might leave a double. If you throw the guard, are they worried that uh, Linda Pets might play the double run onto the red? Well, That's what it looks like they're worried about. There's a possibility of that. There's enough room where you, the red may hit the one in the back of the forefoot, but if they both spill out, they're still getting maybe three there for keeping the uh, yeah the yellow that you're running in in uh, in there. Can't hear them, but I think what she's wondering, if you look at where she's tapping the ice, if we put the guard right there, do we take away the hit and the uh, angle run in? Yeah, I don't think they can guard both here, because I think what you have to guard naturally is just the kind of pick, yeah? And then doing so by guarding the high side of that... can't really cover this angle run. Yeah, pretty close though. Looks like they've settled on the guard for sure. You yeah, have to be really careful here with the way you hate to tick on the one in the top top 12 foot there so at the same time you do kind of want this to be tighter to be a bit more effective final stone here for Robin Silvernagel throwing the fourth stones for the Peterson foursome sitting one looking for a guard is in danger of over curling. Oh, just a subtle in time. Oh, 
think uh, Lena and Silvana thinking perhaps they can throw just enough weight to move it for two. I, I don't think they're thinking more than that. No, basically just, yeah, if you make contact, you have to move it uh, two rocks, maybe. Assuming you stick the shooter around and get two that way. Probably close to the same weight she just threw. I am kind of surprised they didn't take a longer look at this uh, the single run here. Going to Pets with her final stone in the second end. Freeling by one, facing one. Looking to just move it back, see if she can't score at least two. Pretty close here. By the guard, now they'll try to carve it over. Needs to get some finish to make contact with that red stone in the forefoot. She'll rub it. Doesn't move it far enough, but her shooter stays in the back of the forefoot, so it'll be a single point for Team Tier and Zoni. They're on the board. We're all tied up one apiece after three ends. We've just got our shipment of logos here, and we're... Our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. Sean Joyce, Mark No with you here live from the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. Semi-finals here. All tied up at one after three ends of play. Peterson team will have lot Brock here as we begin the fourth for the first time in the game. Center guard thrown up by the tiers only team and now the Peterson team looking for the corner. Pretty good guard. Center guard, corner guard, come around. Game on like here it. in the fourth. Nothing out of the sweepers so far. We'd like to keep this stone in front of the T-line. And if the Tears only team has had any trouble at all today, it has been finding the weight on the draws. They were short on a couple in the second end. That one slides to the back forefoot. Melissa Looks Gordon like being asked to, come, asked to come around the corner now. Looks like plenty of room here. We can hear a little bit from the uh, on ice mics here. That it's got a curl here. We'll get a little bit of finish and kind of partially buried behind their corner. discussed making a play on it but they can only see about half 
And this is still just the fifth stone at the end. If you clip the guard, it would go back. I wasn't so, sure if we were playing with the no tick rule or if it's just in the extra for this event. The no tick rule is just the extra. I'm just speaking. If you make a, a hit attempt on oh, that stone in the rings and, gotcha. and uh, clip the guard, I think if we were two stones later in the end, you might have seen them make a play on, on the stone in the rings. But if you accidentally kill the guard here, it would go back. and They want to make sure they get something out of that stone. Comes down, sits on the face of her own. So it's Tiranzoni sitting two. This is the sixth stone at the end. You can start making plays on the guards now, and Robin Silvernagel is going to ask Catherine Dirksen to try to run this straight back, see if she can't move at least two. The guard and one of the ones in the rings. It's right on the center line here. Should be pretty close. A bit more finish here. And, oof. Actually manages to clip the back one. Does get two of them out. There. Still leaves Tiern's only sitting one. Does get the guard a little off the center line now. So are we looking for top eight or are you looking for top 12 for a little bit more separation for shot rock i think you want to make sure you're second with this one as well but you're going to bury it stone at the back is going to be partly exposed it's got a lot of room by the guard though yeah curling now coming down pretty much to their own so Pretty much similar situation, except for uh, Peterson gets the chance to run their own rocks back. Oh, here a woe early. Yeah, and it's it's not a close woe either. It's, uh, we're driving this over the top of everything. Woe and it does get the guard out of the way though. Forces uh, Sylvana Tiranzoni to put it back. On right away on this one yeah picking up early i wonder if they're having to go just to hold it up because it was tight or if it's the weight because the weight seems to be pretty close it sounded like a call from the hack in so I think maybe she's just a little tight and they wanted to hold it early now looking to finish it it's that into a really nice spot touching the edge of the center line you can see a sliver of that yellow perhaps from the hacks but uh not enough to make the double. They're going to play the run back again. Jenna Loader with the attempt. Needs to get close to the nose. Going to be a little bit thin again. Just Drives it off. by and... Rolls her shooter into the side of the other corner guard. The only, the only reason that makes a bit of a difference is you could probably split center now and there's not a port to get to the uh, stone in the rings as well. Yep. Yeah. So they can afford to be high side, which should be a little bit of benefit. They may be looking at taking a little bit more ice anyways based on the how the last rock turned out. Oh, 
This one's a bit tighter. A little more weight on this one. She's going to bring it in a little closer, and that makes the uh, distance for this run back a little shorter. Now, it, it hasn't been the distance that's been the problem. It's been uh, getting the line right. Definitely tighter on the release this time. Now the brushers have to go to try to hold it. This one's going to over curl. Yeah. I don't know whether to say that was fortunate or unfortunate. I'm not sure how you managed to get a rock between that red and the yellow. And even if it catches the red, they might have gotten fortunate in that it would have come back and at least disturbed those two stones in the forefoot. Yeah, definitely had plenty of weight to, to mix things up. You know, the uh, <clears throat> the red rock there on the, the corner of the 8-foot doesn't really do much for you. Not much you can uh, make that double. Yeah. Right uh, now, those two stones in the 4-foot make it very hard to even score with your last one. If this guard is made here, uh, do they run back the, the yellow rock, or do they ever look at running one of their corners back in here, Sean? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You could look at running the corner red. This one's sailing a bit deep as well. The problem with running the corner red is, of course, the yellows are angled the wrong way from that yeah. corner, and with that one sliding into the 12 foot. Yeah, yeah, you have to take it. it yeah. It's it's made the, uh, again, the distance has gotten shorter and it's the shortest run back you can play. It's the one that's got the most room for error. At this point in time, even if she dead stuffed the first one, she'd be happy with that. It would move the back too and it would open up some scoring area for her. Robin Silvernagel so good at these shots. Possibility here she could make the triple. That would flip this end in a hurry. Asking the wall, is it, are we catching this? Makes the hit, clips the back one. And the shooter did stay in the 12 foot. She's got a bite of the front of the 12. So she's got room to score now, and she's got a setup where she might be able to play a short run back for two. Uh, Puts a little bit more pressure on the Tiranzoni team. It does. Where that, uh, where that rock did end up, it does take away that other angle run here, so... Yeah, she'd have to, if she was running anything back, it would have to be the, run, the rock she just threw. Personally, like just drawing this to the side here. Just got a second counter. That's it too. Got to be real careful with that, not to leave a double. Yeah. I think Alina is leading towards guard the run back and and let her draw to the button. Yeah. Looks like they did settle on that. Sure, none of those other raises are there. This is probably the shot. Lena Pets with her final stone here in the fourth end, just looking to guard the run back. They have been heavy on some of these guards here, but this weight seems to be much better. That's pretty good. I expect there'll be a quick look at all those guards just to see do any of these come right in here? And I don't think they do. The 
closest uh, angle is probably that double run to the far right of the sheet as we look at it from the hacks and they don't look to be quite lined up to go towards the yellow so she's gonna have to play the draw needs a bite of the button Robin Silvernagel, final stone here in the fourth end. Tie game. Facing one, top four foot, needs to bite the button to counter single. Curling nicely now. They got to get this to the T line. Should be pretty close here. They leave it just short. Oh, they may have come up just a little bit short. Ooh. And it is. It's a steal of one for Savannah Tiranzoni. She'll take a 2-1 lead after four her end of play. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Steal of one for Tiranzoni in the fourth in gives her the one point lead as we begin the fifth here. Still calling for the center guard. The one point lead not opting to come into the house here in the odd end. And just a quick peek at our other semifinal game. Uh, team Ackland uh, is up two to one over Team Constantini, and they are in the fifth as well. Similar start to this fifth end as to what we saw last end. Uh, center guard, corner guard, and now the come around attempt. Yep. Always do enjoy seeing these setups. And in, uh, in the game I was uh, doing commentary for earlier, I think we had four out of the five first ends end up being blanks. So I do enjoy seeing Roxon play here. by the front one. Comes to rest, just biting the top. Button it is buried, and that's the one difference that they didn't have last and they slid to the back of the forefoot. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, they've... Robin Silvernagel was able to ignore it. Now she's going to have to make a play towards that stone. on this one early yeah did hear a top eight call so oh are they bumping not gonna get by does manage to get the shooter into the rings i think that's important if you stay out of the rings it's a free guard but by rolling in you kind of force Tiran's only to make a play. Yeah, that's what I was just and about to ask you, Sean. She double yep. guards that shot rocket. You've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. 
Going the curl side, now back to the straight side. Does hit it. see if we get a little bit of a flop back towards the center. Like just a double quick peek over the shoulder to count how many rocks are back there and start looking at getting rid of some of the stuff up front. Sweepers off this one. Are we going through the... No. I thought for a second that we might have gone through the hole there. Ends up just with the peel on the one guard. Turns. We will look to put it back, cover up shot rock. made it's a little higher chance for double peel you saw Robin indicating go over the top and actually if you can make the double peel over the top you might send that tighter guard straight back and clip the shot rock as well Alden for a little bit of late sweep Catches the tight one, drives it by the stone in the rings, but does remove both center guards. It's a good shot. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Does give a little bit of breathing room for uh, Team Peterson here. As it was looking pretty scary there for a little bit. but And it's almost shaping up to be similar to this last end. Forces, forces this guard to be a little bit more precise. Yeah, don't really want to see what they were doing a little bit in the last end where they're throwing their guards and ended up being pretty tight on a few of them. just to get this over to the center line. Does touch center. And guards it, but you can see a little bit of it. And you can see the side that uh, might give you the chance to roll behind the corner. Sweepers looked like they wanted to go on that all the way, and they were just waiting for somebody to tell them the line was good, and it really never quite got to where they wanted it. So, a little bit of well, opening here. Ice, I gotta think Robin's just looking to straight pick the stone out of the yeah. yeah, I thought I heard hack, but and she seems to be scooching that just a little bit further and further out. Sweeper's on it hard. Are we clearing that? Ooh. Oh, the dreaded feather tick where... You don't make the shot and didn't really move the guard either. Are you coming in top 12 here or are you just... Oh, Alina's telling us a two guard here. No, I think you've got a guard just because of the side that's open uh, is the side where she could roll behind the corner guard. I don't think you want to leave that as an option so you don't risk over curling coming around. Straight guard here, 
Robin Silver and Engel will probably have to call for the double peel again. They were on this one early as well. Yeah, I can afford to be a bit on the high side. Don't want to overcurl this here. And as long as we stay on this side of center mostly, that's in a pretty good spot. Probably got it deep enough. I was just wondering as it was coming in there if they were going to leave it in a spot where the double peel might push it onto something on the side, but it's probably deep enough to avoid that. Yeah. And I wonder if they were just kind of going hard to hold it up and didn't really have too much thought on where they wanted to send up. Oh, this one out there a ways. Any chance you can make it over the top? Okay. Looks like it. I don't think that was plan A, but it <laughs> worked out for them to get so. those cards off the center line. Yeah. A little scary for the sweepers. You're not putting a lick to it, but then you're not having to sweep appeal is always is a little bit of a benefit, I suppose. Well, I think I heard, and again, it, we don't have mics directly on the players, but we do have mics out there. And now that we're down to just two games, it's a little easier to tell which voices you're hearing. And I thought I heard Robin make a quick call right at the end to sweep. So I think she saw it just as it was coming across the hog line that there might be the chance to get it over the top. Pets looking for the guard. This one's got a lot of line. Are you ticking off the that They're one there? Sweeping to make it curl, and they actually get by the red. They might have been better off with the rub that you yeah. were looking for, Mark. She covers a sliver of the edge of that stone, I guess. But Enough that Robin probably can't roll back underneath. So just like to hit and roll open here. Uh, Robin looking to roll to the edge of the forefoot, or pardon me, the edge of the eight foot, and perhaps get her chance for the blank at least. Stone on its way, and the brush called on right away. Got all of the rock, but she does need to get by that guard that was just thrown. She's going to be tight. Just rubs it. And papers it again. Uh, does hang I mean, a shooter on. Yeah. So hit and roll pretty big, I guess. Mission accomplished. Well, this is where it becomes an issue of just how important do you think Last Rock and Even Ends is because Terranzonian Pets talking about ignoring that stone. You know if you hit it, Robin Silverman is going to have a chance to blank. Yeah. If you could tap this stone up or come around, looks like they're talking about the tap, you might still have a chance for the force. Sean, are you ever calling a split here? Or is that just too dangerous and too tricky? Uh, it, it's pretty tough. That rock's a long ways up. And really, does sitting two help you? Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose if you make the split, you're pro likely leaving some sort of double. You could, yeah. This shows you, though, just how important these teams feel that Last Rock and the Even Ends are because she's not even willing to give up the chance for the blank here. 
she'll risk giving up two, but then she'd have last rock in the even end. She's got a nice weight, just waiting for this to come up. She does have all kinds of rocks on the corner. She can tap it behind. Yep. We'll tap it into the eight foot. Now Robin Silvernagle has a choice to make because she does have one guard up there. She could try to run it back for two. They are going to take a look here. She's thinking about it. Looks to be about seven or eight feet. She'd have to run it back. She's got enough of the stone. Yeah, Team Terrazoni has just always been pretty good about forcing the issue on the other team. Their, their force efficiency has been pretty in line with the rest of their stats uh, on the season, just even for this event. They're wondering also if... Oh, yeah. Are they looking? Is there a port there? It's a skinny port if it's there, but I think that's what they're trying to figure out. Is there room to get between the red and the yellow? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's... And if there is, which is easier, the port or the run back? I think the run backs... Yeah, I mean, the port, the, the only... when I If I look at the port here, if you ever catch the yellow there, that's on the center line, I mean, it's it's a long angle, but if you ever just jam back on your own... You... you, you you give up a steal of two there. Where I think if you're playing the run back. Yeah, I think they're playing I think they're playing the port. I don't think I'd be worried about catching the Well you're probably catching it pretty thin if you catch it. I'd be more worried about rubbing the red and then have your shooter come to the nose of that yeah. yellow and tapping it in because it doesn't look like she's throwing big weight here with that ice. Yeah. Try to throw the weight that you can control with the brushers, to get the port. Robin says it looks a little tight. And I think Sorry. I heard you say bump, so that's that's where that danger comes in. If you rub that top red guard and then yeah. hit the yellow, you're you're gonna put it into the rings. Final rock. That's gonna curl now. They're very close to bumping this She's yellow. Got a lot of the Yellowstone. Where's this going to end up here? Enough Ooh. weight to push it through the back. So it's a steal of one for Sylvana Tiranzoni. She'll take a three to one lead after the fifth end. Sastel Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Semi-final Sunday here from the RBC Dominion Securities Western. Go down. Tiran's only with a 3-1 lead now as we begin play in the sixth. 
They've brought their first stone to the top of the forefoot, and Robin Silvernagel now asking for the corner guard. With a two-point lead, expect Kieran's only to continue to play into the rings. Yeah, Team Terenzoni uh, made that last end very, very interesting. Uh, this is the first matchup between these two rinks, between Terenzoni and Peterson. Although Terenzoni and Silvernagel have played quite a few games, um, with Terenzoni having the slight edge over Robin uh, Silvernagel. Although, I will note that uh, Robin Silvernagel did win their last meeting back in uh, 2019 here. So ignoring the two stones in the middle and looking to use the corner guard. Nothing out of the brushers yet. You can afford to be deep here, you just want to be buried. It is buried. Silvana not interested in chasing. It's going to put another one in the middle. Yeah, I think the front end is slightly disagreeing. But it looks like they are going to make the call to go for the guard there. Needs this to curl to cover up shot stone. Ooh. Yep, last little bits gets there. So looking for the run back here and Robin even lining it up. Where do we have to hit the first stone in the rings to roll the... Uh, raised stone over the top of our own. That's getting pretty greedy. <laughs> you want to kill all three yellows and, and leave your reds in play. I think she's asking for the curl, but up a little she will get two yellows the guard and one of the two stones out of the forefoot but leaves the other dead buried behind her shooter she's looking at coming to the back one or seeing if that red well one I think she was looking James. at making a play on it with, with half weight or something like that. But uh -huh. uh, it's tough from the hack. She cannot see very much of it. Uh, asking for a back line here. This is one where you want to make sure you make some noise. If you click the guard, at least get it out of the way. And with back line weight, your shooter might end up in behind cover as well. And if you clear the guard, you've got a chance to get the back one. Looking for curl now, so she's by the front one. Now looking to get as much finish as they can. Hope that with what they can hit, it's enough to get it out. They'll move it, but it does hang on to the back of the 12-foot. Tiern's only sitting two. Another chance for Catherine Dirksen for the run back, this time running her own stone 
towards the shot rock at the top of the four. And again, clips the side of it, makes contact with the second yellow. It does get everything out of that four foot area, but leaves Tunes only sitting one. Yeah, one and buried behind that corner guard, so. Does. Does, it's good to get rid of that one uh, on the center line, of course, here, but uh, Tierney yeah, will have a chance to just put it back right now. It's not a bad result. She doesn't mind that one sitting at the back 12 foot. That's a rock that if she gets a chance, she might be able to use it, but we are getting late in the end now. And just really quick, want to say hello to everyone watching us uh, on the uh, Curling Zone YouTube page. Got almost 500 people watching this uh, semifinal game. This one. Very nice. Well, they've had some struggles at times with their draw weight, but she brings this one right into the top of the forefoot and dead behind that red corner center guard. Jenna Loader now will have an opportunity to play the run back again, again with her own stone. They're on the sweep on this one earlier, and this one is curling. This one's curling quite a bit. Needs yeah. to go just to make sure they clip that guard. Uh, would have hated to go by and, and not move anything. Jenna's had a couple of uh, her outturn hits that have backed off, and I think it's just something in the way she releases it. Of course, these players don't necessarily know each other that well. Robin Silvernagel is a, a substitute in at Skip this week, and... Uh, she has tightened up the broom for her quite a bit on that outturn, and she may be not throwing them all exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, over the course of the events, you know, they've it's it's still it's been a long event, so they've been able to pick up a little bit. The team's obviously done well to make it to the playoffs here and make it to the semis. Uh, pretty much doing well in the uh, on the road to get here, just only dropping the games to uh, both the uh, Korean teams, uh, Team Gim and Team Kim. Ravana Tiranzoni here with her final stone. Looking to replace the guard. This is going to slide a little tight again. Yeah. Does the job. It makes the run back a little bit easier when there's less distance between them. Here you see already, I think Robin has given her a little bit more ice on this one. This one's and This one's back and off that line. It's that difference in her release where some of them will back up on her a little bit. Yeah, this one looked like it had maybe a little bit more extension compared to some of the other releases. It could be a tendency, or it could just be a, a matter of we're still early in the season and players aren't necessarily in their mid-season form yet. Yeah, I think this is only the second event for this uh, Peterson rink here. Uh, yeah, they did make the semifinal at the uh, Mother Club Fall Curling Classic uh, roughly a month ago. Well, uh... <laughs> Tiranzoni's uh, had quite a few events. Alina Pets looking to replace that guard now. Yeah, most recently, uh, Tiranzoni did win the uh, Boost National in North Bay. I think that was just last weekend, I believe. 
Yeah, it was last weekend, because I did not get a chance to watch it, as I was at a spiel myself. As you mentioned, it does make the guard. Good amount of separation yeah. here, but we're still going to have to peel it regardless, yeah. Or I, I keep on trying to make these runs. Well, and, and really needs the run back here just to make sure she's got a shot to score with her last one. Gosh, this one's floating a bit too. Nothing out of the brushes again. Ooh, does make it. I think it was Robin that was trying to call the sweep on and uh Jenna might have thought it needed to curl just a little bit more. Makes the run back anyway. Does leave her shooter out there as a guard. But if uh, Pets is able to bury around the guard now, she'll be off the center line. Robin will at least have a shot to score. Darren's only leading by two here in the sixth end. This is fourth stone thrower, Lena Petz. Her final stone, looking for the come around. Still has a lot of room. Yeah, sweepers don't really seem too interested, just escorting it down. Now a little bit of late sweep to get this berry here. Had to wait for that to curl, starting to move now. She'll get to the top of the button now, not fully uh, under cover. Robin and Jenna discussed it, but uh, they didn't signal. I don't know whether she's trying to catch the edge of the button or is she playing to push that back? Yeah, this... It doesn't look like you can see very much of the edge of the button, but that looks like a lot of ice to try to push it does here so but they made the decision pretty quickly here well. final stone for robin silvernagel here in end number six facing two from tiranzoni the one at the top of the button the one she's got to draw in just past it to perhaps pick up her single this one's got a lot of room This looks like a lot of weight. It's going to slide through the four. It does come to rest for second shot at the back of the eight foot, so it'll be a steal of one more for Sylvana Tiranzoni. She'll take a 4-1 lead into the seventh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Nothing but singles on the board here through six ends of play. But it's been three straight steals for Savannah Tiranzoni that has put her up by a score of four to one as we begin play in the seventh. Same formula we've seen for the last few ends. The first stone brought into the rings. Robin Silvernagel will look for the corner guard. Hasn't been a deuce scored in this game yet so far, but Robin Silvernagel is really going to need to push for one here. Just to get herself into a manageable situation, at least for that eighth end.
Yep, Tira's only just happy to come on into the rings for a second time. Brings that stone into the top of the eight foot. And Silver Nagel looking for the second corner guard. They talked about whether to split the house or to play on the same side. And I think they've opted to split. So we'll have a corner on either side. Trying to even these up good. just so there's no cross house double peel later on in the end. Karen Zoni will keep piling rocks into the middle, knowing that Robin Silvernagel eventually has to deal with them. And that has been the problem in the last couple of ends. Uh, the Silvernagel, or the Peterson team, skipped by Robin Silvernagel just hasn't been able to deal with those rocks in the middle early enough in an end to try to set up for offense of their own. From the on-ice mics, it sounds like they're just tapping that one to back 12 and rolling in front here. Um, are you surprised they're doing that and not trying to hit and roll towards one of the corners? Mm, I, I think we need to pull out the stops a little bit. I'm not sure that I necessarily would play it the way they're looking at. You could actually cross the face and maybe move two of these yellows behind the T-line. The yeah. The way this is curling, that might be what they end up with anyway. Oh. That works really well, I think. You get two uh, two rocks behind the T-line now. One of them is actually partially in behind one of those corner guards. That's the corner guard that it looks like Tiranzoni's going to look to peel. Makes the hit. Shooter does roll all the way across and out of play. So really, with Tiranzoni sitting three here, you can't, you don't have time to, to just draw underneath your remaining corner, do you, Sean? Do you, do you have to make a play on well, something? Well, you, you could, but the middle is still junked up. I I, uh, I don't mind your first call to split. I actually wouldn't mind playing the same shot. Tap the yellow back, roll in behind the corner. Yeah, I think you could start to, to make a yellow wall at the back. Looks like she's opting for just the freeze on the open one. This it's pretty tricky there. Yeah, this is uh It's probably my least favorite of the shot choices that they've got available. Here hard line here. Send across the face. Yeah, it looks like it will, and that will leave it in a spot where it can be safely removed. Yeah, 
Any reason for Tiranzoni to look at slashing the that red onto the red? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just a little too risky if you ever jam yeah. it onto the yellow back there yeah I suppose. oh yeah you're three points up you don't really need a double I, I, I know what you mean though Mark she doesn't like that red one when nah. it's in a, in a spot where Robin Silvernagel could use it but it's not safe to remove it yet, and uh, you don't really have to force things too much when you're up three. Tiranzoni with her first stone here, looking to hit and I think roll back towards the center line just a little bit. Yep, just a hair back towards center if I reading their broom taps correctly. Having to go hard to sweep it over. Get it. And does maybe roll a little bit more than they wanted. Because it does leave a little freeze opportunity here for yeah. Team Peterson. And if they can get to the to the nose at least, or maybe even just a sliver to the inside, it could be very tough to remove this stone. It'll just go into the side of that other yellow. Touching this top 12 rock. We are. Not a bad leave. Well, it does make it difficult for uh, Sylvana Tiranzoni to remove either of those two stones, but for now, Tiranzoni's sitting four. What do we do? Do we tap? Do we straight? straight guard here that's that's what i'm wondering do you throw a guard and and i also understand the other side of it sylvan tiranzoni is three points up and every fiber of her being says i don't want a guard <laughs> yeah but i mean i again you know based on uh my uh i'll say uh recreational arena curler strategies thinking the guard makes sense here and, and force and then it kind of just forced Pete, Robin to make a play on those somehow. She doesn't have any way she can really safely remove either of those red stones. So I think what they're looking to do is, and it will, if they can do this, it essentially does the same thing as the guard. They're trying to get right into the pocket of the two reds. Yeah. Oh yeah, if they ever can get to the yeah, just right to the pocket where you, where that red that's kind of on the left hand side is just not really usable for. Yeah, it would it would line it up so that the yellow red would go past everything, and it would take away probably at least one of her tap. Opportunities, maybe both of them. I'm going to go hard for a line because I think this is maybe just a hair up yeah, from what they wanted. Might be getting on to the stone on the center line. If they bounce a little bit. Well, if you if you had to use the drag, that yellow red combination at the top probably looks like it goes by the stone in the forefoot, but you could probably hit it in such a way that it would go straight back. Yeah. Don't have to play that yet. You could play, I think, Robin, looking at the... You run the red onto the yellow, you could kill two yellows. 
where will the reds end up when you do that? Yeah, I think... I mean, I, I think ideally you'd like to catch it on the center line side, so maybe you can change the angle on that yellow red on the top here, but then you then you spin off the target red, which is which is a problem because you'd like to keep that around. Jenna Loader looking for the short run on the red. See if they can move some yellows around. Makes the run. Catches two yellows. The leave was interesting. It was. Probably rolled a little too far for... Tiern's only sitting two, the two at the back of the forefoot. Yeah, yeah, oof. Because <clears throat> you almost have to guard this. Do you have to guard this yellow double? Through the port, you mean? Behind. Yeah. Uh, no, the one behind the, the, the forefoot, like the... Uh, the one on the right-hand side, if you're looking from the throws perspective. Yeah, through the port of the two red guards, the, the one in the 12-foot and the corner guard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be the one I'd be the worried about now. Of course, if you made that, that second yellow stone might just dead jam on the yeah. one at the back, so it still might only leave you sitting one. Yeah. And I think, of course... The first objective for the pet or for the Tiers only team, uh, Alina Pets throwing last, is they're, they're trying to find a way to remove red stones. Yeah. It's just, I'm not sure there is a good way to remove red stones right now. They can play the yellow red combination at the top onto the red stone in the eight foot. It should go out, might take the one at the back with it. The problem there would be. Does that redstone spin back in towards the forefoot? Yeah, I think the... If you could ever hit half of the rock on that yellow, come across, kill the red at the top of the 12 foot, and uh, have the second one almost dead stuff just so it doesn't spin back to the top of the four. That might be your best result. You'll you'll lose the rock at the back, back eight you foot. You do, yeah. But that one's not really helping them. They might be looking at trying to hit half a rock on the uh, board side of the yellow which would drag that one back a little straighter and maybe you could double the reds that way. Oh, and then have you, the, the middle You hit them in line. It, the, uh, the top red one would probably go over the top of the yellow in the in the back. I think that's in, what they've settled the on. Hit about yeah. half on the broom side so that that red comes pretty much straight back. You know it looks like it's angled to go into it, but with the drag, it'll come close to straight back. And you can have the reds go out over the top of all the yellows. Looking to move some granite here. I don't think she's going to throw this one quiet. Definitely going to be on the high side here. So pretty close to what they asked for. Makes the hit. What does get the double. Does go shot. over the top of the yellows. And the uh, and guards that double. Wow. first stone she hits actually rolls over to the top of the eight foot and guards second shot rock. Jeez. What a shot. Well, she got rid of some red. 
Yeah, mission accomplished, I'd say. You know, I'm not so sure that she didn't open up an opportunity for Robin Silvernagel here as well. Uh, the three stones that are sitting shot second and third are all behind the T-line, and they do have a guard to work with. If she can come around that stone in the top 12 foot, even half around, it becomes very hard to get this stone out. They were on the sweep right away. I've lost track of what's in front of the house here, so I don't know if this is in danger of hitting anything. The rock she's got to worry about getting by is, is in the 12 foot. Okay. The other thing is they need to make sure this is deep enough to be shot rock. I'm not sure why they woed. Uh, yeah. Now she could just throw a guard. Yeah, because there's... Uh... You, you pretty much had to get that in for at least... At least second, yeah. Second. I had a quick look around to see if any of the angles look bad. I think they've settled on just throw the guard. Now, are we straight guarding or are we guarding the high side to take away the tap or the low side to cover a little bit of the other one that's top 12? I, I think they're probably guarding the tap just because it's the easiest shot she's got and she just threw it. Granted, it's only for one. That's not going to help Robin a lot. She's probably going to be looking for some kind of run-in double. I just don't know if there's anything there. Do you like the weight of this guard so far? You know, they're just a matter of putting it where they, which side they want to cover pretty good and now what do you see that you can run back oh yikes she doesn't see anything so she's gonna play the draw try to get her single here yeah someone who routinely say there's always a double I'm having a hard time seeing a good a good double here Well, actually, maybe I did see something there. You're looking at the triple? That's still only for one. The triple, yeah. Just the yellow on the yellow and kick it over. The trailing by three here as she throws her final stone in the seventh end. Needs to get full four foot for the single. Has to get by the guard that we just thrown. Also has to get by her own at the top of the eight foot. And this is going to rub. And it will be a steal of two. And that will be, I guess we can't call it handshakes, fist bumps. Yep. <laughs> Savannah Tiranzoni picking up the six to one victory. She will move on to the final later on this afternoon. Strong match from the Tiranzoni team and this Peterson force have just couldn't quite get anything going. So it ends up with an early finish. We want to thank everyone for joining us here on CBC Gem and Sass Tail Curling Stadium. On behalf of myself, Sean Joyce, and my broadcast partner, Mark No. thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the final in just a few hours.